I'm already bad. <laughs> look at this fabulous cowboy hat. Yeah, look at that. Uh, Westworld up in here. Right. What's Westworld? Oh. It's it's a it's a very dark series that you're too young to watch. Right. No, <laughs> I'm 19. How am I too young? You can, it's, it's like it's, another it's, level above that. No, you're I'm just, no. Super adult. Commander Wolf, you must understand. I'm too young to watch it. Mm. <laughs> We're all too young. We're all too young. None of us have gotten old enough to watch Westworld. In any case... I'm Tempo, by the way. Hello. I'm... Hi. Nice to meet you, Tempo. This is my new co-host, Tempo. Isn't he a nice person? <laughs> well, oh. well, no. well, 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 Westworld was also a, an old movie back in the 70s. It was, and they right made it into an HBO series. It's now about Anthony Hopkins. Several years ago, I had observed that I had not ever seen anyone write a furry western. This way, wrote Uh, what about, yeah. uh... Oh, what about the that. cows of oh Mumesa? I've got a cowboy. Wait a minute, what about the cows of Mumesa or whatever that show we was? We don't called? speak of the cowboys of Mumesa, except Why? for the people that turned into cow furries, because that one barmaid was rather attractive. But anyway... <laughs> as, as, if, as, if the, as if the cowboys themselves weren't attractive enough? Yeah. Dude, I'm an, hey, I'm ace. I, any gender, anything, I, I will say, you are attractive. I will appreciate right. a fine... Exactly. I can appreciate a fine slice of man cake or a fine <laughs> piece of woman cake. Cake. Cheesecake. Oh, well, <laughs> yes. Yes. As a Wisconsinite, I accept that answer. I do have a cowgirl. Her name is Mindy, and she runs bars. That's who are good. you? <laughs> he Say it. Who are you? I'm Coddle. Oh, you're Coddle? I'm Coddle. That's me. I am... The one with the rat. I'm the one with the rat. I'm, um, I am a communications and business major. Um, my grandmother was in publishing for a couple of years, and in general, I go around and I give advice to uh, furries on how to publish things. I've been somewhat paid to be the media manager for several Kickstarters, um, one of which was for an anthology. Um, and generally, I kind of know, hey, I have business acumen. I know things. Let me help you. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I can, I can get your stuff out into the universe. Yes. Are any of these like going to be published yet? Or are well, you I not? Got, I've gotten some short stories published, mostly in uh, Beyond Ceaseless Skies, and I think... It was another magazine, but this was about two years prior. And I don't like to attach my actual name to my furry name. I like to have two separate profiles oh. for writing different things. And that will be advice I'll give in this thing. And we'll start and we're not starting so, from, so um, you have two separate Twitter accounts? I have two separate Twitter accounts, I have two separate emails, I have two so, separate So so it's like you have so it's like my you life. One for your furry side, and one for your non-furry side. Exactly, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I wear these glasses. This is my Superman, and this is my Clark Kent. Okay. Huzzah. I've never seen you without glasses. Exactly. So you wouldn't know who I was if you saw me on the street. Okay. Okay, no, you're now, right. Now, now, any questions I've had for you on that topic should wait until the end, right? Um, yes. We, um, it's 12.01. I'm probably going to wait till about 12.03 or 5 to get officially started. In the meantime, I'm going to ask you guys some questions. Since you get to ask me questions at the end. Oh, boy. I'm going to ask you questions. You have your hand up. Boy. What's your name? That's the first question. Uh, which one? You're you know what? Oh, oh, we're using our fake names. <laughs> Uh, Aeon. <laughs> Aeon, alright. Aeon, do you write things? I have written things. Ah, have you written books or short stories or poets or your haikus? I have a novel that I'm trying to publish. Ah, that's awesome. This should help you then. That is why Hopefully. I have you. Yes, I'm watching novel about. Well, if you like uh, cosmic horror, talking animals, and ultraviolets, then I am the lion for you. <laughs> Two out of three of those are mine, but I'm kind of more ghibli whimsy than like Gilmore del Toro Hora. Guillermo. Oh, I do love Pamela. You know what? Gil Del Toro. <laughs> I, Close enough. Not pronouncing things is my thing. Well, I mean, um, but that's a, that's a good question. Um, how many of you have written or, or are writing a thing currently? Unfortunately. Oh wow, well, most of you. That's good. Also, I like your choice in hats. Thank you. <laughs> You've got a very good flat cap. I, I want one of those. Yes, I think they have, no, they haven't got any in the dealer's den, but you can get this one at Walmart for like $9. Okay. I'm, I'm cheap. So what's the name of those hats? It's like, uh, people call them a lot of things, driving caps, flat caps, derby caps. I call it my Irish cap. Irish caps. Like, there's a ton of different names for these, but any of those will get it up for you on Amazon. Um, but this isn't a hat panel, this is a writing. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> you and you, a person I've never met before, what are you writing? Um, really crappy. Like no, no, fiction. no self-depreciation. <laughs> no, 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 we're seriously. Gonna it, we're see, going to make you believe in yourself. I this is church. It's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't written in two years. Like, I kind of got into it when I found a particular artist. You uh, know the Harper. artist. He's very good. Thank you. Um, yes, what were you writing about two years ago, then? Um, mostly, like, things involving his what characters and mine. 
Oh, good. So kind of writing for fun and FA and kind of stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Very good. Haven't written since. Oh, yeah. So you and the cool flat cap, what's your story about? Um, I'm currently working on a transformation novel. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you wait have... Minute, wait a 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 minute. I have a button that says I heart TF. Come up here and get it. Go up here. I've been waiting for this moment. I've been waiting for it. There was a Wait, were you not at the teeth? Uh, I only have one, but if you want a sticker, I can give you a sticker. Could I have some stickers? Yeah, have a sticker. Although I didn't bring enough stickers for everyone, so only he gets one. Should we hand... Yeah, I... Here, it's an elephant alligator. Yay! It's Pecky. Anyway, uh, since uh, it is now, what time is it? Keeping track of my time. Ah, uh, it's now 12.05. I guess I didn't get started properly. Weird Alice reading that you should go vote. <laughs> they give you a sticker. Free. <laughs> yeah, it's a great sticker. I love free stickers. In case, hello, I am Coddle. Uh, and you can find me, and if you want to find me after this on Twitter, if you look in the con book, my name is there. It's at the word WAG, W-A-G, and Coddle WAG on Twitter. Uh, and it's mostly that, because as my shirt says, um, tails. <laughs> <laughs> Stars align. And you cannot lie. And I cannot lie. Those other waggers can't deny. <laughs> stop. I never stop. Go this, to your room. No, never. This, I make puns. This is a room. He's actually booked for this room. Exactly. This is my room. <laughs> no, you're, my no room. your con room. <laughs> oh, I'm out of con. This is a room. Yeah. Dang it. it. I make a lot of puns, so this is the dungeon. Or should I say the pungent? <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> you're, you're making me batty. <laughs> Maybe let me just get up my thing on my phone so I don't go over time and then we will get started. Behind the scenes. Ah, uh, that copyright infringement. Oh yeah, I'm not getting any internet so this won't work. But anyway, uh, hello. This is a Fur Fandom and Beyond, writing opportunities beyond the fandom with me, Coddle. And I introduced myself earlier, so I'm not going to waste your time. But I just like talking because I've heard that I have a good voice, even though I actually don't like my voice because I have a slight list, but that's neither here nor there. Hello. Well, let's start off with story crafting, because uh, what you write uh, kind of depends on how you publish it. And towards the middle, we'll go into actual publishing and um, writing advice. So, first, it's important to write what you enjoy. One of the main trends that I tend to uh, give people in publishing is don't chase uh, trends. Because the thing about it is, it takes six months to a year to two years to actually publish a book. Uh, traditionally. So if you see a lot of books following a trend on the shelves, that trend is something that's two years old already. I saw a lot of this in like steampunk, and if you like steampunk, go ahead and write steampunk, but don't write something just to chase a trend, because by the time all those steampunk books got on the shelves, the, the publishers were already inundated with steampunk, with steampunk manuscripts. So if you wanted to write, let's say, historical fantasy, oh wait, not a good example, you want to write, like, let's say, a science fiction book, but you decide, I'm going to stop that and write steampunk because steampunk's on the shelves. Don't stop writing what you're enjoying to chase a trend. Because the trend is already over by the time you see it. So that's the main thing. Write what you enjoy if you want to get published. Don't chase trends unless you've got some, like, low-key Martha Stewart trading inside information. Or whatever. Ooh. <laughs> um, so. So you want to write, and you want to write for it. Furry, what are some questions you should ask if you want to be published? Why do you want to tell the story this way? One of the things that tends to, uh, this is more of a personal thing than anything else, but one of the things that tends to bug me about anthropomorphic literature is a lot of people tend to just write humans with like fur, with like the furry skin pack on. And if you're going to write anthropomorphic fiction, then there should be a reason why you're doing that. You should work it into your lore, you should work it into your world, and you should work it into how you tell your story. Like um, one of the, I think it was Neil Gaiman who said, when you think about your setting, think, why am I telling this story here, for what reason, and why couldn't this story be told anywhere else with these characters? So like, if you're writing a story about, I don't know, a business broker who's trying to do like an Enron sort of thing, that's fine if you want to do that with Furry, but you need to work it into like, maybe, I don't know, he's a mouse who's trying to become a stock broker, and that's mostly a predator profession. Or you know, something like that. You have to work it in to your actual narrative, and that will make it more interesting and give you more of an edge over other people. Um, who are just kind of, you know, writing, you know, this is just my high school drama with ears and tails. Or he sees a giraffe and he's tall enough that he can see everyone's yeah. phones. Yes, he can see the trends coming as he's right. a giraffe. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. watches everyone else's really screens. <laughs> exactly, I have to feel you, which is a different thing in that, which is a different <laughs> panel I should run next year. 
But in any case, it's a lovely time to be into um, anthropomorphic and furry literature because we're having a bit of a renaissance, which of course kind of started in the 80s, with things like The Secret of Nymph uh, and the Redwall books, which are some of my personal favorites. Uh, but it's continuing Good on choice. today with things like Zootopia. And um, like CNN just did a massive expose on furry, so it's becoming steadily more accepted. So if you are going to try to get uh, furry media or literature published in a more traditional setting, I think now is a good time, people being more accepted of it, and um, you know, there, there's precedent, definitely. In any case, as far as getting started, and this is more crafting stuff, and we'll get to the business acumen a little bit later, start with your world, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier. If your world is just our world with no changes, why is everybody animals? Look, like if you're gonna make everybody animals, that needs to impact your world. How does that impact, I don't know, religion? How does that impact social standing? How does that impact government policy? How does that impact infrastructure? Uh, is everybody the same size? Are smaller prey species smaller? Are they bigger? Uh, how does that affect how people are at the bus? How do they get taxis? Or, you know, how does that affect how people vote? Are people more likely to vote for a predator or a prey thing? I think Zootopia, as earlier, is a pretty good example of this because they have all the different infrastructure and things like that. But your world will be more interesting and more lived in if it is a little bit different because a world full of animals would be very much different than the one we have now. Brainstorm. This is very good if you have friends. If you don't have any friends, we will be your friends. We are your new people. Hello, latecomer. Come into my den of writing. Many days. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of really good uh, Telegram chats, Discord groups, Google Hangouts, and all sorts of things uh, that can help you with brainstorming. If not, uh, go to Walmart, get yourself a whiteboard. A whiteboard is about like 10 to $20, depending on how much you... Like, you can get one like this for a dollar, but like I like the big ones. And like, uh, you can get a whiteboard for like 10 to $20, and just take yourself a white marker and just like make a little web of ideas. Just... On a whiteboard? Yeah, on a whiteboard. Then you can't see anything. You said a white marker. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> In any case... Um, and, you know, just toss every single idea that you have at the wall and, um, like, have a moment where there's no bad ideas. Because, um, you know, some ideas on paper sound crazy, like, oh, I want to write a fantasy about teen vampires that sparkle in the sunlight. That's stupid. But, hey, it made a billion some odd dollars. <laughs> so, like, there's no... So, in the brainstorming phase, there's no idea that's too dumb. Like, hey, I want to write a book about space... Well, not a book. I want to write a movie about space wizards.